Hi, in this video I'm going to show you how to wire up your PWM or digital speed controller to your trolling motor and battery in case of a failure while you're out on the water. That being said, let's go ahead and get started. These are the two main parts you're going to need for this project. First of all, you're going to be needing a SAE 10 gauge cable socket sidewall port that is waterproof, which is this piece right here. And you can see the connection there, and it's got the little waterproof cover. And it's also got this connection on this end of it, but you're not going to need it. So once you determine the length that you need to hook up to your PWM, you're just going to go ahead and cut that off here. Then the second part you're going to need is this SAE 10 gauge extension cable that's got two plug-ins on each side which will plug into the port here. Now I don't have an extra project box or PWM line around so I made a mock-up of what the side of your box is going to be like to make these connections and I've already drilled out holes here in this mock-up in order for this to slide through and fit flush. So here's a close-up of my mock-up for this test. Now what's important when you end up hooking all these together that you have the right connections going to the sockets and then coming out the other side. So you need to line those up to make sure the positive goes to the positive and the negative goes to the negative. Now, if you remember, I showed you the extension for these plug-ins. So what I did was I cut it in half, and then just for this purpose, I connected the black wires and the red wires together. Because what that does, it allows these to match up to the plug-ins that you're going to have on the outside of your PWM box. And so it's very important to make sure that you keep all that straight. This is a very simple diagram of this project. In the center here, you have the exterior of your PWM box with the two SAE quick connectors that I showed you earlier. And then here on the left side, you have your trolling motor and on the right side you have your battery. Now the battery is going to connect to one of these SAE connectors and then the trolling motor is going to connect to the other one. Now the internal connections are going to be the same as normal. You're going to run the interior wires from the trolling motor to the trolling motor connectors inside the PWM. And the same will go from here. You're going to run the internal battery or power input wires to the power connectors inside the PWM box. And so that will give you your basic circuit that works. Now, during the failure mode, you will disconnect this connector and this connector, and then you're going to put the jumper between the two of these connectors together, and that's going to give you your circuit. So this is my test setup. I'm going to be using a PWM mounted in this box from an earlier project and I'm running jumpers to my mock-up right here where you can see I have the SAE 10 gauge sidewall connectors. One says battery and the other says motor. And those are also jumped to the trolling motor in the background. And then I have my battery as a power source. So I'm going to turn this on to show you that everything works. And if you look to the upper left corner there, you can see that the prop is turning. Now the opposite direction. Okay, so you know the circuit is good. And I will diagram this out and include it with this project video. Okay, so now that you have your mock-up here, 
what I'm going to do is simulate that the PWM goes bad and you don't want to be stranded out there and having to paddle back. So I'm going to show you how you can run a jumper between the motor and the battery at least to get you back at full speed to wherever you need to be. And normally in this setup you're going to have a circuit breaker or a fuse between the battery and your input to all this just as a safety precaution. I'm going to start the failure test first by turning on the PWM and getting the trolling motor prop to turn. Then I'm going to disconnect both plug-ins and attach the other plug-in that I showed how to make earlier. Okay, we have the prop turning and now we're going to go to a failure. Again, I'm making sure that I have the right polarity with these jumpers. And there you go. As you can see now, it jumped to full speed, so this failure test works. In case of an emergency and your PWM goes out, you can get back to where you started from. So that's it. If you have any questions, please leave them for me in the comments. Thank you.